Morning, everybody. Dale here, Scrapyard Rescue. On today's little adventure, we are headed into town to get the exhaust put on the old fair lane here. So we've got a, well, it's 50 miles one way. So I gotta be there at eight in the morning. That's why I'm leaving pretty early. It's only a little after six, so we're going to do that. And hopefully when we get there, um, everything will be good and I can get right in. They got me scheduled for the first car in this morning at eight o'clock. So I'm hoping it won't take a more than, I don't know, you know, three hours or something to to get this on because then I got to come back home get the car unloaded then turn right back around and head straight back into town again to drop off the the U-Haul so I got 200 miles to drive today which is going to be pretty boring yesterday I had to go get the trailer so that was a hundred mile trip. But I can't wait to get the car with the exhaust put on it. I'm really hoping, I'm really hoping they can run the pipes out and go dual all the way back and out the back of the car. They, they told me they thought they could do that for my budget. Um, but if they can't, I'd be okay with running the tailpipes out in front of the uh, the rear tires. That I think that would look okay, and I put some chrome tips on the end of the pipe so they look kind of clean, and I I'd be good with that. So um, either way, you know, as long as I can get it put on today for under 500 bucks, I'm I'm gonna be pretty happy with that so with that uh, we'll just when we get to the exhaust shop get it in get it up on the hoist I'll uh, I'll get a picture and maybe a little bit of video that shows you know what's under there right now there's not, not much all there is is the exhaust pipe on it and that's it and then when he's all finished we'll we'll get you some more maybe hopefully some video and see what's going on so we will just get back here pretty soon hey guys uh dale here we are on the road for the first i guess we're going to call it our the actual real uh, trial run here. I've run it up and down the road several times, um, you know, from my house to the store here, which is only like three miles. So this is going to be, I'm going to take it out on the road and uh, just run it for a ways, uh, see what happens. Um, we got the new exhaust put on yesterday. Uh, I wanted to get some pictures of it, but the guy, the guy got it off the hoist so quick before I could get in there I couldn't get any pictures and I didn't want to tell him to put it back up on the hoist so you know I guess I'm going to try maybe I'll try to bring it up on my ramps at home see if I can get under there and show you what we got but uh, I don't know if you can hear it in here um, he put duels on with glass packs all the way back and they sound really nice so let's go ahead and get going and see I'm going to run it about 10 miles up the road here and then come back that'll be about a good 25 mile trip and we'll just see if everything works okay um, let's just hit the road up now with that exhaust I think really helped it boy it just uh, uh, it fires right up um, idles idles right down it, it 
according to the tag, it idles, it will idle at around 500 RPMs with no problems. Uh, the book says about eight, but hey, if it works that fine, that's good. Uh, having a little bit of an issue with the tranny. Um, I need to punch it up to like 65 according to the speedometer before it will shift to the third gear. So I don't know. Once it's in third gear, it seems fine. runs great. It's just it doesn't want to shift there. I don't know if it's that uh, vacuum valve down on the tranny, that might be bad. Um, it shifts from low to second, okay, but then coming out of second to third, even if I try to manually do it, uh, it needs to get up to 65, and, it, and then, it, then it jerks into gear really hard. So it, it feels kind of like, like it has a shift kit in it, you know, but I'm pretty sure they wouldn't have put one in a car like this, so... Let's go ahead and run it up and see if we can get her to shift it. There it goes. See, it shifted just fine. I, I just don't think that, uh, you know, 65 is where it's supposed to go into third. this camera work's going to be in here either. It's, the road's pretty bumpy and I don't have a real good setup for my camera. I guess if it, when I get home, if it's all messed up, I'll, I'll just do something different. So, and hopefully, we won't see any sheriff's officers out here because I don't have any plates on this thing. Not even registered. But according to the speedo, we're cruising at about 50. I've been having a little trouble with, uh, for some reason, with the fuel pump on it. Um, I, I switched from the mechanical pump and put an electric fuel pump on it, and it's supposed to pump between 7 to 9 PSI. The, the book says that this should only, only needs to take uh, 6 PSI. So it should be big enough to pump gas, but like just now, I pulled into the gas station, I turned it off, they put 25 bucks worth of gas in it, uh, and I went to start it, and there's no gas up in the fuel uh, filter. It's completely cold dry. So it's like it's out of gas. Uh, and then I got to sit there for a while, and I practiced while I ran the battery down. Uh, and then after about 10 minutes, I'm just sitting, and then you turn the key back on, the pump will finally pump some fuel up, uh, you know, and get it, and get it up in the carburetor, and then it, I had a, a guy jump me right there, and it fired right back up again. And this is twice that's happened. Uh, it seems like if I get on it and run it too hard, the fuel pump can't pump enough fuel to the carburetor. So it starts to starve itself, running out of gas. And I'm wondering, this is not a Holly carburetor, uh, it has an adjustable um, fuel bowl. And supposedly they said that it was tuned for this car when I bought the carburetor for it. And so far it's been pretty good. I had to adjust the idle mixture screws I think about a half a turn and it, and it evened everything out perfect. So um, I don't, you know, 
I don't know, maybe I gotta get more fuel into the fuel bowl or something. I don't know if you can see that big mountain up there in the up ahead, but uh, I believe that's Mount Bachelor. That's up by uh, Bed, Oregon.
good. I don't know if you saw that, but that was a state trooper. Oh, that's all I need. We're almost up here to the turnaround. Hopefully, uh, he doesn't have his computer on. I don't think you need a front plate in Oregon, so hopefully he wasn't paying attention. He's not coming after me, so I guess not. Figure. Okay, we're going to turn around here. Downshifted. I'm going to change that vacuum valve on the tranny and see if that helps. Okay, there I got the phone dialed in, so we should be okay now. I won't be bouncing all over hell. Now, sneak back this way and hope the state trooper's not coming this way again. That seems to be running good. It's idling at 500 RPMs. Um, Still not getting anything on the temperature gauge. I know it works because I've overheated it a couple times when uh, the thermostat. What that noise was.
I sure hope it's just that valve. I've ch I already flushed the tranny out, uh, put new filter, gasket, you know, all that good stuff on it. Um, all the fluid. Let's see if I can get it to go. Come on.
couple minutes and drain it out. Before, what I was doing is I would just disconnect the gas line and turn the key on and let the, uh, uh, and just let it pump, it, pump the gas out. So, that was kind of cool. to say I can't, couldn't tell if my blinker light had turned itself back off when I turned back there. I kind of spaced it out. Apparently not because that car just blew by me like that. I don't think he would have if I would have had my left turn signal. Well, it shows it's going 55 miles an hour and the tack is reading 2,000 RPM. I think that's a little bit high, but there's a lot of ifs involved in that. Like I've got 15 inch tires on the back instead of 14, so that may have something to do with it. Uh, the tachometer, you know, I mean, it's Chinese, so what can I say? Uh, who knows if it's even accurate, but it seems to be, okay. Like, I can tell when it shows it's idling at, you know, 500 RPMs that it's, it's idling at 500 RPMs. I can, you know, I can listen to it. I know enough about an engine to know what, pretty much what the idle speeds are on it. things we are we made it back home so that was the uh, longest run we did with this car since it we got it going and we did about 25 miles or so uh, 25 to 30 something like that ran it up to speeds up to about 70 um, had a couple a couple issues uh, that I was talking about and you know in the, during the road trip there about the fuel system I'm not sure what's going on there maybe you guys have had that problem before 
uh, do I have a bad fuel pump? Uh, do I need to uh, raise the fuel level in the carburetor? I'm not sure that's the right answer because if it's not getting to the carburetor, it doesn't matter what it's set at. So I don't know what's going on with that either. Uh, the transmission thing is concerning. Um, if it's shifting all, relatively all right, um, there's no slipping and stuff like that. It shifts hard, and I have to get the engine speed up more than I'm sure it it shouldn't have to go between 60 and 70 miles an hour to shift into third. I think there's something wrong there. But what would it be? That's that's I'm not sure what what's going on. Is it a transmission to uh, once it's in first, second, or third? It just it goes fine. It's not doing anything weird. Um, so I think the first and easiest step is to change the, um, the vacuum control valve on the transmission and see if that's wrong. I know there's an adjustment on there and when I had to, when I cleaned the, the flush the transmission out and I put a new vacuum line on that and I tried to adjust that screw, but apparently it's, it looks like it's a brass type adjusting screw and it was tight uh, I couldn't get it to budge and I I didn't want to just twist it off of course and break it so I quit monking around with it so I think I'm gonna buy a new one I think they're 25 bucks I've seen them uh, put that on check it out and then go from there um, I'll have to I'm not a transmission guy so I don't know uh, that's another question. You guys, uh, let me know what you think of this. Um, I've worked on cars since I was 15 years old. I've never, I've never torn a transmission apart. Uh, I'm pretty good mechanically. So, what are the odds that if I got a, like a kit for this C4 transmission, I could put it in without screwing something up? You know, totally. What you know is that. Is it difficult? Is it something that a guy needs experience, you know, to do? Um, I see some guys on YouTube that do it, and they it doesn't seem to be very difficult, you know. So, I don't know. Let me know what you think about that. The other thing is uh, I was talking about that the temperature gauge never comes up when I'm driving it. Well, Okay, I drove it 25 miles, and I got to the last stretch about a mile. I live about a mile down this the goat trail here. Yeah, I get to Blacktop. And when I got back to there, the gauge finally came up. So it came up to about halfway up on the on the uh, dial in the in the dash, and it started. Uh, uh, pissing out of the overflow tube. Not bad. It wasn't like it was just overheated and just blasting, you know, steam out. And when I got it up here and parked it, um, it was just kind of barely hissing and spitting. So um, I don't know what's going on there either. It, why it takes so long to heat up and then it seems like it goes from cold to like at least normal to maybe even a little bit hot it has a 165 thermostat in it that's what the book calls for i don't that's pretty low but um i don't know if i should change it but i you know i don't know I, i'd rather see the engine run on the cooler side than the hot side but then you know i don't know what to do with that so and the other thing with the fuel when I pulled up here and parked and put it in park and was sitting here with it idling and all of a sudden it kind of just started conking out, sputtering and spitting and I, I shut the key off and I got out and looked under the hood and I checked the fuel filter in the line. It's empty. It's like I ran out of gas again. So it's like what? I don't know what's going on there. And then so I just said, oh, well, I'm home. I guess I'm not going to worry about it. Well. Then 10 minutes after I got home, I came out and I looked at the, the fuel filter and it's completely full of gas. 
So where's if the fuel pump's not on, where's the gas coming from? It's not coming from the tank unless there's some kind of a suction that built up. Um, or is it dr back draining out of the carburetor and back down, gravity feeding back down into the um, fuel filter that way? That doesn't make sense either because I don't think the gas can come back out through the line and there's not enough line. It's only about 18 inches from the fuel pump to the carburetor where that, they could have that much gas in it to fill the float up. Maybe it's a three eighths inch line, so 18 inches, that's that's probably a lot of gas. So maybe it's going back from the carburetor down into the, the fuel filter and filling it back up. But why is it doing that? Um, it, it can't possibly be sucking that much gas out of it. Uh, I've taken the plugs out of this thing a couple times and the plugs are good. They're, uh, uh, they they all look like they're still new. Um, I did when I I had to pull them out the other day, and one of them on one of the cylinders it was kind of fouled a little bit, um, and so I swapped plugs to one that was clean and cleaned the other one off, put it in a different cylinder. I'll pull those plugs out again here in the next day or two and check that cylinder and see what that plug looks like. Maybe the plug just got fouled and then it wouldn't you know wouldn't so I don't know but as for uh, some of the clunks and bumps you heard on the on the road that's more the road than the car I I I think the front end still needs to get dialed in and hopefully that'll kind of you know straighten that out and and stuff um, if not I'll probably go with a better better grade of shocks, but I'm not sure that'll cure the problem either, because I have my Tahoe, my wife's car, or pickup truck. When we drive down these roads, they all clunk like that. They, they, the, uh, the county tried to decide, thought they were going to save money one time, I guess, and pave the, their own roads. Well, apparently they didn't have a rat's ass idea what they were doing, so about every 30 feet on the road, there's a big crack in them, so you just go like this all the time down the road. And then they go out every couple years and throw some tar in them and throw gravel on them and stuff. And then they figure that's fixed. So instead of just resurfacing the road so we have a nice road, they just keep farting around with it, you know, just spending everybody's money. And uh, so that's what a lot of that was. But I did hear uh, something in my door on the driver's side is loose because I hit a bump and I heard a clunk in the door. So I got now I got to tear the upholstery off and get in there and try to figure out what fell off. The window rolls down, up and down and the door latch works. I don't know what fell off, but something's clunking around in there. So I'll have to find that. Um, what else do I got to do here? The next major thing is going to be the alignment and then uh, carpet and door seals and a couple little doodads. And so I'm going to order some stuff tomorrow, just some little fiddly stuff inside. Door, new door locks and the little grommets that go in the doors and uh, a couple other things. Um, I don't know. I, had to, I have a list in the house on what to do. Um, I found some door seal stuff. Steel rubber products does have the correct profile of the original door seals on these cars. It's eight bucks a foot. You got to buy it in bulk. And I figured it would take about 12 feet for the front doors and a little bit less for the back doors. So you're looking at a hundred bucks a door. But then that's that's actually basically the price of what door seals cost. Like the ones for my Pinto, for the, the two doors on the Pinto, it's 200 bucks for the door seal. So it's 100 bucks a door. Um, this is the correct stuff, and you just got to glue it on and, um, and, you know, and hope for the best. Uh, I know like on my Pinto, it has the little push pins all the way around it. You just pop it in a hole. That's, that's kind of nice. This stuff doesn't have it. Um, so, uh, Auto Crafters carries it, but they have those little pins in every four inches, which on these doors don't have the holes for them. So, 
that stuff don't work unless you want to pull all the things out and it costs the same thing anyway so I don't know that's what we're gonna do on that um, let's see what else did I need oh if you see you were looking at you through the video you saw that the windshields cracked um, so I'm looking for a new front windshield for one of these so if any of you guys have got one uh, or you know somebody that's got one uh, you know send me a send me a comment or something bleep something to me and let me know um, if it's on I'm on the west coast so if it's on the east coast don't bother because uh, I, I can't <laughs> drive to the east coast and back to get a windshield you know it'd be a, like a three thousand dollar windshield if I did that so uh, if it's somewhere closer to the west coast you know let me know and uh, if it's a pretty decent price for one I'll I'll come and get it but um, so anyways let's uh, let's just go ahead and um, end this video here uh, it was uh, I'm calling it a successful uh, first major run uh, I, the only trouble was that fuel thing there down at the gas station but um, we'll uh, we'll figure that out and stuff so maybe I maybe I might have to put the mechanical pump that I have I have a brand new one of those put that back in so at the higher rpms um, you know that thing is just hammering away in there and maybe that'll actually pump more fuel than this electric one at high speeds so but you know that's pretty easy to do I can do that in about 10 minutes swap them fuel filters or pumps around so anyways let's just go ahead and end this this video here uh, be sure to subscribe I got in the last two videos I got uh, I think I got five new subscribers on each video which is which is good it's not you know fabulous like you know a lot of these other guys but hey for me it it works so you know uh, you guys that haven't subscribed you know hit that subscribe button for me you know give me a thumbs up uh, it really does help if you leave comments YouTube some for some reason wants to see that people are interested in your your videos before they'll promote them so you know leave comments uh, thumbs up be sure you subscribe and we will, uh, I think, uh, I don't know what we'll do next. Um, I've been working on the other fair lane. I got the trunk pan cut out. I got half the motor stripped down. Um, so I've been, I've been fiddling around with that when I don't have anything to do with this. So, but anyways, I'll keep you posted on what's going on. We got some work on the Pinto to do. We got carpet and the door seals I was talking about to finish that car up and my goal is to try to get these two cars done this summer and then just have Fairlane number two to to deal with after that so I will uh, with that I want to say goodbye thank you and uh, thanks for watching